from BarryLovelace.com and CorePowerForBaseball.com. My good friend Mark from SoftballPerformance.com asked me a few questions and they all pertain to the core because fortunately I love training core with all my athletes no matter what athlete they are, softball, baseball, Irish step dancers, equestrians, you name it. If you're an athlete, if you're a person that's moving, walking, healthy, you got to train that core. So we'll try to make this short and sweet. Now, as you can see, I have a bat and a ball in my hand. So we use anything, especially in core power for baseball. We use baseball bats, softballs, uh, all kinds of fun things to really grab that core. So Mark's first question to me was, and to educate you on what the core is, is what exactly is the core, Barry? And is it a fancy name for abs? Well, whenever I give a lecture or a speech or an appearance, I ask that same question to the audience. What is the core? And most times, probably 99% of the time, the answer is always your abs. Okay, that is part of your core. Your core actually is designed of 30 different muscles from here, about right here, to here. Your torso, your center of gravity, and your power pack. And what you have, those 30 muscles act like a belt. So whenever you need to stabilize, whenever you need to balance, your core, those muscles just squeeze and they wrap. There's tons and tons of little stabilizer muscles in that area that just engage and force your upper body and lower body to stabilize. So you can't see me right now, but I'm going to go on one foot. When you're on one foot, you're grabbing that core. Your body automatically is grabbing that core because that's the only way you can balance is at the center of your body. So how many times as an athlete are you on one foot? Every time you run, how about just a stay-at-home mom? Or whatever it is you do when you're walking, running, going upstairs, going in and out of a car, almost everything you do when you're on your feet, you're on one foot. So that's why we train that way. And those core stabilizer muscles are your center of gravity. I think that's the third time I said it. Said it. That's where all movement begins. So no matter if you're throwing or you're hitting, whatever it is, you have to start here. You can be as big and strong as you want to be, physically looking. Lift as much weight as you want, but that is not going to make you a better athlete, and that really isn't going to make you hit harder or farther, no matter how much you think. And what I want you to think about real quick, and then I'll move on to the next question, is if we were meant to be big and strong as athletes, depending on a position, well, football players, yes, tackles and, you know, the front linemen, they have to be big. But if we are really meant to be big and strong and look big and strong and be a better athlete, then think of all the power lifters, all the Olympic power lifters, and think of all the Mr. Americas and Miss Americas and Mr. Olympias that are just grossly humongous, and they look healthy. Do you really think they're a good athlete? Throw some softball uniforms on. All of them set up two teams and have them play against each other. Do you really think they're going to be athletic? Not really. It's all about the core. There's testimonials from all over the world. I train athletes all the time, every day. And trust me, when you start training your core, when you start using these exercises that you'll see on the website, you're going to feel that core engage in no time. So work your power pack and everything else follows. And the other thing that it does, especially a pitcher, a catcher, a thrower, when you're, if you have shoulder problems and now you train that core, you're going to throw from the area, again, where all movement begins, which is your core, and let everything else relax. So you're going to have longevity, especially pitchers. Now you're going to have longevity in your game because right now you're trying to throw as hard as you possibly can with your arm, once you train that core, throw with your core, relax with the arm, worry about technique, it helps prevent injury, you're going to be throwing longer as well until you last longer um, in your games. Number two, why is core training important and how does it help softball? Well, I just answered some of that. And the way it ha helps softball in just about any sport is again, it protects, it's going to protect your back, it saves your back, catchers, you know, you're down in that position for so long, it's going to help you balance. Pitchers, you're on one foot, a very, very high percentage of your game. And the other thing that core does, this is still part of number one, but we'll combine it with number two, is 
it actually helps your reaction, your lateral movement, the way you leap in the air for a ball if you need to leap in the air for a ball. And what I mean is that core brings your upper body and lower body together. So think of a foundation. Whenever you're building a new house, they put that cement in the ground, a foundation to, put your, to build your house on. Well, there's little pieces of rebar, little bars that go in that cement, and that keeps the cement nice and sturdy. Well, that's what those stabilizer muscles and the core does for your body. It keeps your body nice and stable. You want to be, have pillar strength. When you have pillar strength, just like this is solid, here's your center of gravity, here's your upper body, lower body. Well, some of you may not like that. Here's your upper body, lower body. You're going to move side to side. You're going to jump higher, and everything comes together. If you're not strictly training your core with core challenging exercises, then when you go to move side to side, your upper body goes, then your lower body goes, and then your core and your center of gravity follows. You want to have this tight so that your center takes off, your center is throwing, and everything else follows. That is the benefit of core training, especially for softball players. Um, your lateral movement, the catchers, your, your balance more, you're going to be able to get up quicker, you're going to be able to react, you're going to get ready for that ball. Um, nothing beats training the core as it's meant to be trained. All right, and that leads us into number three. Is there any difference between exercises for traditional abdominal training, meaning crunches, sit-ups, leg raises, um, etc., and core training? So is there a difference between traditional ab exercises and core training? Absolutely. Um, crunches, as it, you know, Mark I know keeps you very, very well informed. Crunches are okay as long as you perform them correctly, and but sometimes the majority of the time, right outside that wall right there is, is a group of gymnasts, and they do crunches, but they're really grabbing their heads, and, and they're just not doing them correctly. And that can hurt your back. That can actually weaken your core. And when you just work the abs, abs, as far as crunches, leg raises, you're not working your whole core area. You're not working all those muscles that hold that upper body and lower body together. You're only working about four major ones. So, you know, your upper, your lower abdominal muscles and your obliques, those are nice for show um, if you can develop them, but they don't really make you a better athlete. So yes, there's a huge difference. Um, when you're just on a ball and you're doing those crunches on a ball, that's fine. You're gonna feel it, but again, it's not great on your back. But what we do is we use um, we use this bat. We use the bat, we use the ball to challenge that core. So you want to challenge your core whether you're in a push-up position, whether you're on one leg swinging a bat side to side, just like that. That is engaging my core because I'm on one foot. I'll actually stand back here so you can see me. I'm on one foot. I'm swinging the bat side to side. This is just a movement, nothing fancy. It's just moving while you're trying to stabilize it. And now my core is engaged and it's like a magnet is pulling my core out. So when you start doing these exercises, there's, there's two on the website, try them. Feel your core engage. And those are just two little exercises. We got some crazy fun exercises that athletes love to do. You look forward to it. I know uh, I speak to athletes all the time, especially professional ones. Weightlifting is fine, but sometimes you don't like it and you get bored of it. Core challenging, power performing exercises, you're going to like it. The number one reason you're going to like it is it's different, especially the innovative exercises in core power for baseball. They're fun and you're going to see results. Like in days, if you do an exercise, if you do a workout today, take tomorrow off, do another workout the next day, take a day off, do another workout, you're going to see a change. You're going to see a change in your throwing, your hitting, the ball's going to sound different when you hit it. You're going to hit with ease. I can't explain enough on why the core is so important and fun. So that's why you see the crazy exercises in core power for baseball. I want to thank Mark. I'm very honored to be here um, to give him some information to you, the softballperformance.com followers. And thanks again. Please, please train your core. It's going to make your game so much better. It's going to make you feel better. And you're going to become a better athlete in no time. Thanks again. Barry Lovelace from barrylovelace.com and corepowerforbaseball.com. Have a great day.